We've talked an awful lot up to this point about how you can deploy EVNG on your own hardware, whether it's your own local desktop, like the one I got sitting back right here, or a server like ESXi, which I have sitting in the other room. But what if you don't have your own hardware? What if we want to deploy it maybe in the cloud? Are there any cloud platforms that can let us do that? Yes. Google's platform, Google Cloud Platform or GCP, allows us to do something called nested virtualization. Basically what we're saying is we can run virtual machines inside of virtual machines. So using GCP, we can actually run EVNG. Beyond that, GCP gives us a $300 credit within our first 12 months. So we get $300 that we can play with whatever we really want to in GCP, and that includes an EVNG virtual machine. So by the end of this video, we'll have EVNG up and running in GCP. Get ready, it's gonna be fun, let's get going. So you wanna get this up and running in the cloud, right? Luckily for us, one of the ways that we can get our EVNG resources up into the cloud and off of our local hardware is using Google's cloud, GCP, the Google Cloud Platform. So by the end of this video, we'll have EVNG up and running in Google Cloud. Here's how we get started. We start by opening a new tab right here and I'm going to cloud.google.com. And if you don't have an account, that's okay. We can create one for free. And what's even cooler is the Google Cloud gives us $300 to use at first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click get started for free. We'll take advantage of this free account and those $300 that'll help us get started using EVNG. So it's automatically detected that I'm logged in as this account here on Datanox because I have an account based in Google. So I'm gonna agree to the terms here and click continue. Notice again, how beautiful that is, $300 credit for free and no auto charge after the free trial ends. Now your resources will stop working if you haven't set up a pay as you go subscription. So you'll have to provide it with a credit card and set up the pay as you go subscription so that way your EVNG instance will continue working after the $300 is extinguished. But just keep that in mind, this is a great way to at least take EVNG for a test drive. So I'll click continue here. And we're going to click start our free trial after we get all the information stood up. So now we've got our Google Cloud account set up and ready to rock and roll for the big show. Keep in mind what it is that we're trying to do, though. We're trying to create a virtual machine that can run many little virtual machines like servers or routers or switches and everything under the hood. That's kind of the essence of what EVNG Professional does. And in order to do that nested virtualization, which is what it's called, we need to actually tell Google we're going to use an image for EVNG Pro that's going to allow nested virtualization. So check this out. To get started deploying our virtual machine with nested virtualization, we're going to scroll down here on the left-hand side under Compute Engine, and then we're just going to click on VM Instances right here on the top. Now, the first time you launch VM instances, it'll take a second to actually spin up these resources. So just give it a moment until you see a screen that looks like this, where you've got create, import, or take the quick start. But what we have to do now is we actually have to enable the ability to use that nested virtualization image. Specifically, we're going to be using an Ubuntu image that has nested virtualization built into it. So up here in the top right corner, you can see where my mouse is. It says activate cloud shell. That's what we're going to do. And when you give this a click, you may have to wait a second or click accept or authenticate or something like that to actually launch this cloud shell. But after a moment, you get a greeted with a cloud shell that looks like this. So what I've got going on here is I've got a huge command copied to my clipboard and you're probably gonna be wondering where do I get my hands on this huge command? Check the description below as well as page 44 of the Eve NG Pro cookbook. Now check this out, I'm gonna, from the clipboard where I've got this huge command copied, I'm gonna hold shift and press insert. You can see it does this huge G cloud, compute images, create nested, blah, 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 blah. It does a whole big thing. What this is doing is this is actually enabling that nested virtualization image in our G cloud environment. Now, the first time you run this, it may also ask you to authenticate or accept the terms in order to actually run this command. So just click OK to that. This will take a minute to run. So let it sit, think about the world. And when it comes back to it, we'll go from there. And after just a moment, we get the ready status here saying that everything is ready to rock and roll. So that's a great sign that now we have the ability to use our nested Ubuntu image in order to create our virtual machine. So now that the terminal is done here, I'm going to close this out. And we're gonna get started creating our first VM instance. So I'll click create, 
And it's time to get started. First things first, we have to give our instance a name. Let's just call this like EVNG Pro because we are working with professional here. Now labels are optional. This is just a way for you to categorize or organize your resources that you use throughout Google Cloud. So go ahead and add labels if you want to or skip it. The region is important because you want to choose a region that's closest to you. So you have nice low latency. Iowa and South Carolina, I think South Carolina is a little closer to me, but do know that if you change regions, there is a chance for your pay to change as well. How much you have to pay for this? See, right over here, this is the estimated billing, and this does charge per hour. So as long as this virtual machine is on and running, it's going to bill me every hour that it's on and running. Of course, if you shut it down, then it stops being on and running, and you stop getting billed for it, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to choose to choose South Carolina right here. That way it's a little closer to me. And now we get on to the actual machine configuration itself. First things first, E2 is not going to cut it. We need to use Cascade or Skylake. In my case, I'm going to choose the Skylake CPU. But then you see it defaults to a specific size of VM, 1V CPU and 4 gigs of RAM. And guess what? That's not going to cut it for EVNG either. So under machine type, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose custom and I'm going to scale this on up to 4V CPUs. There we go. And I'm going to scale my RAM down to be 8 gigs of RAM. Notice with these selections that my monthly build changes. So that's a pretty big thing to keep your eye on when you're working on these things. Let's scroll down some more because we've talked about CPUs, we've talked about memory, we've actually talked about the type of CPUs, but we haven't talked about storage yet, and that's what this boot disk is going to be all about. See, this boot disk is set to be a basic Debian 10 gig boot disk, and that ain't going to work for us. So let's click change. And first things first, we created a custom image all about that nested virtualization. So under custom images, we'll let it sit and think for a second while it does these dot dot dots. And now in the drop down, I see my nested virtualization here with today's date selected on it. So I'll give that a click. This is the nested Ubuntu Bionic. That's the one that we want to be using right now. Now we're also going to change the disk type. You see standard di persistent disk is going to be the slowest available disk. Balanced is going to be a little bit quicker and SSD is going to be the fastest. Uh, 10 gigs of disk space though is definitely not going to be enough for my EVNG environment, especially if I want to get into things like CSR 1000 Vs, SD-WAN, Firepower Management Center, things that are going to occupy a lot of disk space in the first place. So I'm going to set this to be 150 gigs and I'll choose select. So the guts of my VM are now put together, but now we got to talk about how we're going to access this. So if we scroll down a little bit further, I am definitely going to be allowing HTTPS traffic because EVNG is going to be running an HTTPS server at the end of the day. But there's a little bit more. What IP address are we going to access this on? Remember, this is in the cloud, so we need to make sure we know what the IP address is so that we can access it over the cloud all the time. Let's expand this management security section down and we can actually it expands down too much we got to scroll back up and jump over to the networking section the network interface here is where we can actually get the public IP address that we're going to be using in order to access this device over the internet so let's edit this default network interface here and you can see it's kind of set up into two sections we have the internal IP address which we do not want to change and we have the external IP address. When it's set to ephemeral, this is basically saying DHCP, just grab a random old IP address, and that could cause us some issues. We really want this to be a static IP address, even though that does come at a little bit of an extra cost. Let's click the drop down here and choose create an IP address. I'll call this Eve Pro IP address. And I'll leave it set to premium for now. If you hover over these, you can see this just talks about how traffic enters the Google Cloud and how it's routed to your instance or your VM. Premium is fine for me, so I'll click reserve. It'll take a moment to reserve the public IP address, and then I'll be off to the races. So with this in place, I'm going to click done, and let's recap everything that we've got going on here. First things first, I gave it a name. Second thing, I chose the region that I want it to be in. Third, if I click the series of dropdown here, we either want this to be in the Intel Cascade or the Intel Skylake. These are the processors that allow for nested virtualization, and that's important to make sure that we set. 
From there, we went on to specify four vCPUs and eight gigs of RAM because that's really kind of the minimum that you want for a good EVNG environment. But if you're going to be looking into getting into SD-WAN or Firepower Management Center, things that require more RAM in general, you will have to scale that up. We changed the boot disk to be our nested Ubuntu Bionic with an 150 gig SSD. We're allowing HTTPS traffic and we set the public IP address under the network interface information. So guess what? It's time to create our virtual machine. Let's click create and it's now creating our Eve NG Pro virtual machine. The good news is it doesn't take very long to deploy a virtual machine. So we'll give it a few seconds and come back to it when it's done. So it really doesn't take very long to deploy this virtual machine. Now we actually have a server up and running that we can install EVNG on. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do a little bit of prep work on this virtual machine to get it ready for EVNG. Then the EVNG installer is really gonna take care of it and handle the rest of it for us. It's gonna be pretty easy after you got these few commands down. But again, I can't encourage you enough to check out the EVNG Pro cookbook, looking at a round page, 48 to get the exact commands that you need to run from the shell. So check this out. We're going to click the SSH button here. It's going to actually launch the SSH terminal directly into our device for the first time. We'll be able to see it from the command line. So here we are. I'm on the command line and what I'm going to do just elevate my privileges with a sudo hyphen I just like that. And guess what we're going to do next? We're going to install EVNG. The command looks exactly like this. wget hyphen capital O hyphen then a space Here's the link to the shell script that's run. We pipe it to bash hyphen I, press enter, and sit back and watch it have some fun. This will take a few minutes to go through the installation process. We'll let it get done, and then we'll come back to it once the installation is over. All right, so that's a great sign. When you see the little exit here, that means it's done and it's installed and it's just about ready to rock and roll. The last steps are going to be to give it an apt update. Just let it run through the updates. Make sure it doesn't need to do anything else in update. Looks like we do have some things to update. Let's say apt upgrade hyphen Y and let it get the latest versions of everything that it needs. And then, and this part is absolutely critical, we need to reboot the machine. The command to do that is shut down hyphen R for reboot and win right now. Let's press enter and that disconnects us from our SSH immediately, which is fine. It's going to take a couple seconds for this device to come to life. So I'll click close. We'll wait a few seconds, count to 10 maybe, and then we'll relaunch the SSH console one more time. All right, we'll try and relaunch the SSH console now. Let's see if the machine is booted up enough to get us in. All right, so here we are. We are now on the console of the EVNG. This is the initial setup dialog, and the temptation is to jump right into it and just start typing away, right? Wrong. Don't do that. We first have to elevate our privileges in order to begin configuring it. So here, from within this console, I'm going to hold control and press C, and you see it pops up a little dialog down here on the bottom. I'm going to elevate my privileges with sudo hyphen I one more time, and now I'm ready to go about typing in the new root password. I'll type in something like Eve, then follow Eve one more time. We'll leave the host name set to EVNG. I'll leave the DNS name the same. It has to stay set to DHCP, so don't change the network adapter configuration here. Leave it set to DHCP. I'll leave the NTP configuration alone, and we do have a direct connection to the internet. So I'll press enter here, and it's going to reboot the machine one more time, but when it comes up, this time we'll have EVNG up and running. Let's launch the SSH console one more time, get verified that we are looking at the right machine. And then we want to do one last operation on this machine, and that's install the Docker containers because we're working with EVNG Pro after all, right? We have to have those Docker containers. That's what makes it so much fun and so amazing. All right, so from the new console, I'm going to say sudo i one more time to elevate my privileges. And I'm going to say apt install eve hyphen ng hyphen dockers. And there it goes. It's off to the races installing those Docker containers that we definitely want to have for Eve NG Pro. So let them get downloaded here. That'll take a few minutes. And while it's downloading, we should talk about something else, and that's the firewall services. You see, if we're going to be using our native console, we're going to be having to access the Telnet services from within these nodes. So if here's me on my computer and I'm connecting in over the internet cloud here into my EVE NG server in GCP, we need to expose the Telnet protocol 
for the right ports down to my public internet so that I can access the routers and switches and everything. Even G by default uses ports 32,000 through 65535. So we need to have an inbound firewall rule that exposes these routes. Beyond that, we need to have an outbound firewall rule that goes back to my home IP address or my office IP address where I'm trying to access this from. So if I click on Google Cloud Platform here at the top of the screen, I'll scroll down just a hair until I get to VPC network and then firewall. I'm going to create a new firewall rule here and we'll call this Eve NG inbound FW. That just sets it up and gives it a name. Now what I want to do is I want to scroll down. I want to give it a priority, maybe something like 1001, or you could leave it at the default 1000. It doesn't matter. The direction of the traffic, this is going to be ingress. This is how we're going to be connecting in to the EVNG nodes. And we want to allow this traffic. Now here's the thing. We're going to set this to all instances in the network. That means all virtual machines that are participating in this network will allow this traffic. Our source IP address range, we can specify this is going to be allowed from anywhere in the world or our specific IP address, but it does have to be CIDR notation. So I'll say 0000 slash 0 to say anywhere in the world for right now. And then, of course, we get down to the protocols themselves. Because we're using Telnet, this is going to be TCP, and it's going to be 32,000 through 65535. At this point, I'll click Create, and that's going to create my inbound firewall rule that I see set up. Now let's just create the outbound firewall rule real quick. I'll say EVNG outbound firewall so the traffic is allowed to flow outward towards my public IP address. We'll set the priority to be 1002 again. In this case, we're going to say the direction is going to be egress. That's my destination. We'll allow this traffic. And again, we're going to say all instances in the network. The destination IP address here, this needs to be your public IP address on your internet. So you could go to Google right now and search for what is my IP address? And it will tell you what your IP address is. And that's what you need to put in right here with a slash 32 after that. So it could be something like 15.15.15.15 slash .15 .15 .15 32. That's what you would be trying to do. Since I just have a lab environment, I'm going to set this to 0000 to allow traffic outbound towards anywhere. And here, this needs to be a pretty wide range of ports. So we could say something like 4,000 all the way to 65535 just to cast a really wide net because my source protocol could be coming from any direction or the destination protocol back towards me could be any direction too. So I'll click create for that one as well. And that sets up my firewall rules. So now that way traffic should be allowed to flow to and from my computer to the EVNG nodes when it's using the native console. So let's check on how that install with Docker is going there. Well, it looks like it's done. So we should be ready to rock and roll with this particular device. I'm going to go back to my compute engine real quick and we'll go into my VM instances. And right here, I see that external IP address. This is the IP address that I should be able to manage and access my device. So I'll say HTTPS colon slash slash and paste in the IP address. Well, it's going to give me a self-signed certificate issue. So I'll say advanced and continue. And check it out. There's Eve NG Pro. I'll get logged in with admin and Eve. And there we go. We are up and running with Eve NG in the cloud. One more thing we should test just to make sure it's working. Let's make sure we can SFTP into the correct host too. This is going to be using the root configuration password that we set when we went through the initial config dialog. So I'll click log in here. It asked me to accept the key fingerprint and I'm logged in. So at this point, I could start loading images into my device. I'll go to opt, unit lab, add-ons, keymu. I'll create a new folder like VIOS 1583. I'll drag my QCAL2 file over here real quick to upload it into the Google Cloud. And I'll rename this to vert IOA. From the console with the final command, I'm going to run my fix permissions command. We'll give it a shift insert to paste it in. Press enter, and there we go. With the permissions are fixed, I should now be able to create a quick lab. We'll call this Knox Lab. We'll add a node to it, such as my iOS router, and we'll boot that router up. With no errors being presented here, guess what? 
That means I'm now seeing my iOS router boot up to life from the Google Cloud that's located right here on this public IP address. This is so much fun. And that's how you can get EVNG up and running in the Google Cloud platform. Take advantage of it because that 300 bucks a year that you can use for Google Cloud, that's a big deal. Just remember to shut that VM down when you're done so you don't incur a huge bill. That's how you can get EVNG up and running in the cloud. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.